Fearless Fans Podcast, your one-stop shop for everything Texas Tech related. Whether you're alumni, students, or just a fan of the school, we are proud to be on each week providing you the latest in Texas Tech University. And then some. Hello, welcome to episode four of the Fanatical Fans. Wait a minute. No, wait. The... Fortunate fans. No, wait a minute. No, what are we? <laughs> the, <laughs> fan- Fantastic fans. Fantastic fans. No, 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 wait, no, no wait. We're the fearless fans. fans. Fearless. fearless. But but as we are all see, those things too, so that's good. Cool. And as you can see, we're having lots of fun with this. This is our episode four. Uh, we're only doing the uh, pick five challenge. This will be week two of the season. Uh, having a great time with that. We've had some great winners. We've had some great losers so far in week one. <laughs> Epic losers, uh, right? <laughs> not to mention any names. <coughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's garbage. <laughs> oh. But just want to welcome y'all and anybody who's thinking about uh, coming aboard. There's uh, there's no problem with being a latecomer to this. You're still going to still have uh, plenty of uh, space to advance in this. Uh, if you don't want your name to be shown, we can put up a nickname if you prefer. Just really want y'all to have fun with this. Absolutely. And uh, without further ado, I want to turn this over to Steve and let you know what the top five games are for the week. Yeah, I mean it was it was epically horrible for you know ninety percent <laughs> of uh, the players. Ah. So you know, first of all, forty four people uh, joined the pick five. So thank you for that. Good stuff. Uh, uh, de- definitely, week one was was a tough start for many, uh, with the exception of our top four. So we had uh, Susan Keith, one uh, part of your work team there, uh, yeah. started out five and zero, the only person to go Ooh. undefeated last week. So congratulations to nice. Susan and, nice work. and, and, and definitely the ladies represented uh, well last week. Uh, Hil- Hillary, uh, James and Sean all at four and one last week. And then a bunch of three and two. And there's unfortunately a lot, a lot of one and four, including, including, um, uh, Steve Garcia, who's part of our team here, right? <laughs> and so uh, we can pick on him Noel, since he's not here. Noel as well, so so definitely a tough start. Um, I can tell you though that uh, this week's games may not be any easier. I'm starting to get smarter with how to do this stuff, so there should be no <laughs> very few five and zero weeks for anybody. But uh, bring it, Steve. I'm not the, scared. <laughs> this should kinda, be a lot kinda of fun. Kind of makes it fun that this is this way, you know? Yeah, really. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So. You already hear the uh, five games for week yeah, two. Before we do it, though, I mean, I, this is my thought. But you know, this there's so many of these people that really have one, one and two wins. I don't mm-hmm. think it's outside the lines to say nope. if y'all still want to join us, come on, because Absolutely. we are so early into this. And if there's a few more people that want to join in, more power to you. I know that we had a couple of people start in the second and third weeks last year that were yeah. one of the top five or so teams that ended up winning. So this yeah. is still a wide open deal. So if there's other people that would like to join us, please do. So and, yeah. and, and look at it this way. I mean, you join in late anyway, you're still going to beat Noel, so it's good. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Zing. Yeah. I, I mean, you're it. one five in a week from first place right now. So uh, That's right. Uh, All right, Steve, go, let's hear it. Absolutely. So real quick, going back to week one, the two games that really just nodded everybody up, uh, as John mentioned, Oregon really just – you know, screwed a lot of people over. Uh, yeah. Auburn, Auburn coming back and wasn't mm. a tremendous finish to that game. But uh, the game that really turned everybody upside down was North Carolina winning. So you know, old Matt How about Brown, Matt Brown, man, right? You know, just when he thought you know he was ready to go hit a bass boat somewhere and retire, then he's <laughs> winning football games again. So you know, good for him. I, I guess. Just say, I, I, I cannot not like him. I've always liked Matt Brown. You know, I don't know why. I have to. Just, yeah. Well, he, he spoke of Spike Dykes with pretty yeah. high praise. Yeah, you know, a lot. yeah I'm sure. And he started out his career at North Carolina, correct? Yeah, he did. He yeah. did. did yeah. y'all yeah. see yeah. the, lock, the locker room there. dance he did, the little jig oh he God. did? Oh, Lord, yeah. 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 That was pretty I funny. Sure did. My eyes cannot unsee that. Yeah, right. Now, i got to tell you, yeah. the, first, the, the time that I really can say that I started liking him, uh, if you've not seen it, you really owe it to yourself to go back and see his eulogy over Spike Dykes. That is, he was a great storyteller. Um, he played some some great honor to to to, to Spike and um, cool. It, it's really worth it as any Red Raider fan to go back and look that up. I'll definitely check that out. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, 
I, I do like the guy, and uh, I especially like the fact that he's no longer covering Friday night games on ESPN because that was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. All right. All right, man. Let's shoot. So week shoot two up. games, here we go. So we have um, five games like usual. The first game's hosted uh, out of the ACC. It's number 12 Texas A&M versus number one Clemson. And just so you know, Clemson was the team that many, overwhelming majority picked to win the national championship in our pick five group. The uh, second game is a game hosted in the Big Ten. Big Ten, it's uh, number 24, Nebraska at Colorado. Mm, okay. Um, and I can hear y'all clacking away on Google right now <laughs> uh, or on ESPN. Uh, the third game is hosted out of the Big 12. It's number six, LSU. There you go. At number 10, Texas. Mm. And then another game I think is going to be pretty tied. Post, hosted out of the Pac-12, uh, number 25, Stanford at USC. Okay. Yeah, these are some good ones, bud. Yeah. And then just a random Division One game. Here we go. The UAB, so University of Alabama, Birmingham Blazers at the Akron Zips. Holy smokes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Repres- wow. It's represented right there, man. I cannot. I can't. <laughs> Where you came up with that one. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So uh, anyway, so, you know, I, it's sort of fun to find that one random game. Oh, but, yeah, of uh, course. Anyway, so, uh, John, we'll start with you. Awesome. First game, uh, number 12, Texas A&M against Clemson. Who do you got? Well, yeah, I don't know if y'all saw today, but you, you got some – Texas A&M offensive lineman that are chirping. Um, they, they told a reporter, oh, there will be an upset. Today. All right. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, and word got to Jimbo Fisher, and first thing Jimbo said, was, well, he better play well. Right? So, uh, <laughs> you know, usually the ones that are chirping before the game, um, that usually doesn't bode very well nope. no, when they play. Nope. However... Um, I think Dabo Sweeney is a you know, Christian guy, one of the best things to happen to college football. You know, I love him to death. Um, I, I got to go with the Texas team, you know, going into Clemson. Wow. Fortune favors the bold. Uh, they're going to go up there and pull it off. I don't know how. Um, the, the, law of, the law of physics. <laughs> I, <guess. laughs> I mean, Alabama, I, I don't think Alabama is going to make much of a run this year. Um, I, I'm really just sick of seeing Clemson in the top four. Um, and, and the sooner they get a loss, you know, they get knocked out of that picture, the better. So I'm picking Texas A&M there. There you go. All right. All right. One thing I'm learning about you is you're a little bit of a homer because you also picked Oklahoma <laughs> to win the national championship. So, uh, so, uh, so if you well, can no, drive if- there, if you can drive there, you're going to root for them. <laughs> well, you know, I just, you know, I, I kind of feel bad on that Texas A and M pit because last week I, uh, uh, you know, Facebook did a suggested group and it had the A and M yell practice. You no, know, my Facebook feed, and of course yeah. I, when you're as connected as I am, you got everybody there. So I kind of was making fun of the saying some hacky jokes and, and doing cheesy things, and and uh, uh, I, I don't know, I, I don't know. There's just there's some good folks down there, and, and I'll. I'll root for Texas A&M as long as it's not – or a Texas team as long as it's not UT burnt orange. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know? That's funny. I like it. Hey, I like the boldness. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. So, by the way, John got two right last week. Okay. Uh, Ryan got three. Keith, you got three. And I also got two. Okay. So, uh, so it gives you an idea just how good we are at this. We're on fire. Uh, we are all on yep. fire. Yeah. All right, Ryan, you're up. Well, uh, before I go into it, I just got to say, I've said this a few times before, but it's always good to say it in a public venue like this. There is something poetically correct about Texas A&M heading up their football team with a guy named Jimbo. I'm just sorry. <laughs> I've just got to oh, say Lord, it. Yeah. <laughs> Match made in heaven, isn't it? But um, <laughs> yeah. look, looking at uh, the, the, the time of the season that this is, um, the matchup, the importance that this is, where this is being played, the weather coming in, um, the number of injuries, uh, everything that we're looking at, I don't think Texas A&M has a chance. Uh, Clemson has this all wrapped up. All righty. Very good. Interesting. Keith, who do you got? Your team from last year, by the way. 
Yeah, you know what? This is a this is a pretty tricky one because they Clemson squeaked by last year at College Station. Um, that was a that was a closest game that that Clemson was played, I think. Um, and so, but 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 again, that is Kyle Field, and Kyle Field, we all have been there. You know, it is a tough tough venue. So I think just for the fact that this is it, this is a home game at Clemson, I think Clemson's got it. Okay. You know, and um, I'll wrap up with my pick. Um, I think if you're going to have a chance to beat Clemson, you got to do it early in the season. But I just don't think you can do that at Clemson. Yeah. So um, I will also uh, pick Clemson to beat Texas A&M. I hope Trevor Lawrence has a better game because he didn't have a very good game last week. Yeah, of course, I don't think he had to have a good game. That didn't I sound think. like it, no. Yeah. All right, Ryan, we'll start the next game with you, number 24, Nebraska at Colorado. Uh, tough game. You got uh, you got two questionable teams going at it. Um, Nebraska has just been on a step down uh, trajectory ever since they left the Big Twelve. I'm sorry, yeah. I can't help but laugh. <laughs> I'm it's sorry, true. I gotta keep my uh, professional composure here. <laughs> <clears throat> but um, you know, Colorado, Colorado just seems to have those swing games where they just rise up to the challenge. And then they will just go and they will just fall flat on their faces against teams that they should not even be competing against. But um, seeing that this is a, 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 a another home game for Colorado, they're kind of getting used to this. They're getting into their season. I think Colorado beats uh, Nebraska, even though Nebraska is the favorite going in. All righty. Very good. Keith, who would you got on this one? I think I think I'm going to go with Nebraska for no other reason than I'd like to see Nebraska come back. So there you go. Yeah, I can understand that for sure. So my thoughts on this game is, um, you know, Nebraska has struggled, but also know that you know there's there's a lot of football stadiums that are hard to win football games in if you're the road team, and you know going to Boulder is one of those places. And uh, it's going to be a loud crowd. It's going to be crazy in there. And uh, for that reason, I'm going to take Colorado to uh, beat Nebraska. And, John, who do you have? Steve wants to win this thing. Well, when Don Williams, uh, he, he was writing about you know, how Tech didn't look sloppy you know, in their game. And he quoted Scott Frost at the end of his article. And Frost said that his offense looked anemic. Right, They just didn't look very good. And typically, you know, when you underperform like that, when you got good staff, and let's face it, folks, I mean, Scott Frost is not, he's not a one-hit wonder. The dude can coach football. But I'd like to think that his success in Florida uh, and his rising through the ranks to get this head coaching job uh, means he's got the knowledge and he's got the ability. Uh, Nebraska's got a breakthrough somewhere, right? So I'm hoping – that that starts with Colorado, right? So I'm going to take Nebraska in this one. There you go. Good stuff. All righty. Excellent. Excellent. All right, Keith, uh, we'll let you uh, lead off with the Big 12 game, number six, LSU at number 10, Texas. LSU. <laughs> 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 that was how you really think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> there really is no need, or, no need to make further comment or, so, um, LSU. No need for an analysis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I have to uh, give uh, kudos where it's due there, Keith. You did wait for him to get the question out of his mouth before you answered it. It was very hard. It was just very barely. Hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and nothing um, would make me happier than to see LSU go into Austin and yeah. uh, just smear them to death. So I'm going to also take LSU. John, who do you have? Well, you know, th- this is this is the game that – you know, Ellinger feels that the Texas Football Magazine, SI Magazine, those curses come down on his shoulders. And I'm sure he's an excellent individual off the field, but he and Texas have gotten too much hype, and this is where LSU pops a little bubble. Uh, LSU wins by double digits in Austin. Ooh, wow. Yeah, I, like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Ryan, the local uh, – Area Austin resident yeah, on this team. Think of your clients while you. <laughs> <laughs> my he, he charges know, Longhorns double. I know it. My clients know very well what I think of their school. Very very well. 
Um, the one thing I don't have in this, I don't know what the officiating crew is, which honestly, mm. I've got to say, I think is an important factor in this game. Wouldn't, you hate to say it, but you're right. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, you got a home, you got a home, uh, game here for Texas. They are close to each other in the polls, which at this point in the season means absolutely nothing. Oh, him and Haw, him and Haw. You've got on record they look they look close. I mean, mentally, there's no question. LSU is the tougher team here, but it's you know it it just seems like Texas just needs that one little spark that just lights them up and they can just be world beaters all of a sudden. Um, which again, with a with a favorable officiating crew, it seems to help. <laughs> Um, oh, I, 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 I hate to, uh, I hate to go against a home team that is this hungry, but I, I really think LSU is going to pull this out. I think it's going to be a close win though. All right. LSU, LSU will win this one in a close one. Hey, just so. Nice. Excellent. Excellent. So four game sweep for LSU amongst the four of us. So. You know what that means. <laughs> the Longhorns. <laughs> Look them. <laughs> All righty. At least, at least we don't have Oregon in this in this uh, Very in these picks. True. Very true. Thank you for that. All right. So I'll lead off with the uh, Pac-12 game, number twelve, number twenty-five, Stanford at USC. So um, Stanford's in my backyard, and uh, now, and uh, so it's pretty cool to know that you know, a very traditional school like Stanford's nearby. But um, I'm a little excited about the fact that uh, Graham Harrell's the uh, offensive coordinator at Stan- at uh, USC. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, it pains me to think that he's there yep. because of the 95 Cotton Bowl. And so I haven't gotten <laughs> over that 24 years later. Those are some tough wounds to heal, my friend. Yep, yep, yep. But I'm a little excited about a little taste of Texas Tech now on the coaching team at, at USC. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go the home, home around and uh, take USC to beat Stanford. Like it. All right, John, who do you have? You know, I, I look at those thoughts. I, I'm excited to see Graham Harrell at a place like USC. Um, I I know they lost their quarterback, pretty sure, uh, in the in the season opener uh, last week. USC That's did. Right. Yes, they That's sure right. did. Ooh. They sure did. Uh, he's done for the year, but uh, you no, know, Helton's coaching for his job, and Harrell didn't go to LA to make excuses. So. I, they'll find a way to get it done. They'll coach up the next pup that they got at backup. I don't even know who the guy is, but uh, that staff they, will have you. They might not even know who the next guy is. You're right. Yeah, I know for real. <laughs> but that's okay. Like Because they'll – the Helton's coaching for his job because everybody in the neighbor's dog think Urban Meyer is going to go there. Um, Harold didn't go out there just to move after a year. Right? They're, they're going to find a way to get this one done. Um, USC wins um, – Closer than what the experts think, right? It, it, they'll win. Um, I don't know the score, though. Yeah. All righty. All right. Ryan, who do you got? The, of, of all five games, this is the toughest one because you're this early in the season. Uh, you've got a huge, huge loss uh, for the Trojans with that quarterback going out. Um, but, but these are the kind of games that define the team for the rest of the season, quite frankly. We're going to find out what kind of team USC is. Um, you know, had this been later in the season, you know, this would be a little bit more predictable, but, um, I don't know. I I think this is too much of a disruptor for USC. And even though this is a home game for California schools, for California football, uh, the home stadium doesn't really mean all that much, especially in a stadium as big as the Olympic stadium for USC. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take Stanford in this game. All right, Keith, uh, your last, uh, number 20, 25 Stanford at USC. Well, first and foremost, I just, I hope, I, I hope Steve that you have an opportunity as hard as it's going to be to get tickets to Stanford stadium. I hope you get a chance to go sometime. I, I will certainly try. Because, I was hoping that Washington state came to Stanford this year, but that's not till next year. Oh, that stinks. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I think the seven fans that are at that stadium, there may be some tickets available. Just saying. But yeah. anyway, um, I'm going to pick Stanford. I think that there's yep. a little deflating blow when a quarterback goes down. Mm-hmm. Um, very hard to recover. You've got to kind of change your scheme. And um, if they've been working on one, some schemes all summer and then they suddenly have to change, it's go. just a, it's just deflator. And so I, it seems like every year last 
last year when I picked against Stanford, they won too. So I'm going That's Stanford. That's right. I remember that too. That was funny to listen to. <laughs> oh my gosh, it drove me crazy. So. <laughs> Stanford and Oregon were Achilles' heels last year. Yeah, they year, really so. were. All right, uh, John, you're going to lead off with our final game here, the UAB Blazers at the Akron Zips. Who do you got? Well, you know, I've, I've got Ken in Alabama. Um, and, and if you weren't rooting for the Tide, you, you were rooting for UAB. So uh, – Auburn didn't come into the discussion. <laughs> so, um, uh, I'll just – I'll go with UAB just because I got some blood ties at that school. And, um, my granddad – here's a kind of a cool story. My, 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 my granddad taught in the choir at Birmingham Southern, right, which is down the road from UAB. Hmm. Um, and I could probably tell you more stories off the air, but – that's a good school, and I'm kind of glad that they got their football program back. Right, they had killed the program a couple of years ago. Yeah, um, I remember and that. And now UAB is playing football again, and I'll, I'll go with them. Yeah, works for me. All righty. All right, Ryan, who do you got? I just want to know what the heck is a zip. I mean, are these a zip ties, zippers? Whatever it what is, is, is a fat. zip. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, these things drive me nuts um, <clears throat> um, two kind of mid-level slash lackluster teams uh, zips with the uh, the home uh, home game here U- UAB has historically been a stronger team of the two which doesn't say a whole lot but um, I'm, I'm going to go with UAB in this one they just seem like statistically the, 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 the more powerful team uh, the the team with the the, the best uh, motiv- uh not motivation but the best uh, um what am I thinking of m- m- momentum that's the word I'm looking for there thank you, you. there you go all righty all righty Keith who you have uh, I think UAB also okay all right so you just don't walk into Akron Ohio and expect <laughs> to beat the Zips. <laughs> ignore the fact they've lost five straight. <laughs> ignore, the, wow. ignore the fact that that um, things don't look good, and I'm sure in that thirty thousand uh, maximum occupancy stadium there in Akron, they'll probably have about fifteen hundred there. Awesome. But I got a feeling we're about to turn it. I'm gonna say. Go Akron. Go oh, there you go. Hang on. Whoa, hang on a second. In that, in that whole tirade, you said we? We got a feeling? Him and self and him. I, 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 yeah, apparently I, so. I got, I got a mouse in my pocket. Come there, on you go. No. <laughs> there you go. I, I'm united with the Man. Akron fans. Nice. You don't and, um, say. I like the Go pulse. Zips. Go you zip. don't have them zip. pick for the national championship or anything, do you? Zip it up, Zips. Oh, I like zips. it. The zip ties. <laughs> hey, I like it. That's solid. That's solid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, we, okay. we're laughing, but we also thought Oregon and, and South Carolina were going to win. So yep. who do we know? Yep. Yep. For I'm real. either five. I'm either yeah, five but we didn't think that five. was such passion, though. That's true. <laughs> you got to have a little passion there. <laughs> no, no, you really don't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, so sorry that, Steve. Love you, my brother. So that being said, you know, that wraps up uh, the week two uh, game announcements. So uh, looking forward. Hey, thanks, everybody that's playing. Um, uh, it's going to be fun chasing after 44 picks every single week. But, uh, oh boy. you know, it, it's uh, great to have a great turnout. And um, hope, hopefully this is a better week for everybody. We all sort of need that for our confidence. Absolutely. You know, the only downer with that UT-LSU game is it's about the same time as the Tech-UTEP game. So I – uh, I kind of want to watch. You know, I'll probably have two TVs, have my phone going, right? And have a TV going too, but uh, so I guess that eliminates that that problem. But you know, that kind of game, you'd like to kind of watch it, you know, for itself yeah. as a separate separate time. But absolutely, uh, weren't they trying to do the prime time game, like the good games? Weren't they supposed to be doing those early in the morning now, like at eleven o'clock? Yeah, that re- I, I heard a lot about that. That's it's so strange. I saw something about that in the summer because they were trying to get more people to go to the morning games, and then they come out with this: you know, Texas and LSU, six thirty. 
that's not quite yeah. following that pattern, is it? No, it's not. Maybe somebody in the higher up said, "Yeah, we're going to ax that. That we're not going to put the big game at eleven o'clock. Right? You're not going to have anybody there. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to be drunk yet, anyway. Exactly. Um, Got to yeah. have that buzz going. Not the one right. that carried through from last night because that slug is you out. You know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> It'll be good though. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. And again. Come join us if you want to. You are not out of this yet, for sure. So, very good. That's right. You know, guys, I I just want to let you know, you know, ceilings aren't really my favorite part of the house, but they're definitely up there. <laughs> you know, I, I learned something new. I mean, I, I've never been to to Europe and, and all that area. So, you know, I still have a lot to learn about the rest of the world, but, uh, I've learned, I learned recently that people in Athens hate getting up early. Oh, really? Why? Apparently, uh, because dawn is tough on Greece. Oh, oh my Lord. gosh. Oh, oh dude, Lord. that's horrible. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is so bad. It's so, it's so bad. I'm telling it. Tomorrow. Hey, I, I heard, I, I so heard bad. one today. Let's hear it, John. Uh, what, um, oh, what was it? Please, for the love, we gotta how, hear how it. do you find how do you find Will Smith in a in a snowstorm in Philly? How do you, how do you find him? You look for fresh prints. Oh, <laughs> <boy. Hey. laughs> dun, dun, dun. oh I love it. Oh, I love it. Well, you know, y'all y'all are talking about all these different places, Philadelphia and Greece. It reminded me of the last time I was uh, coming home on an airplane and the, had a really rough landing. I mean, it was a hard landing. Everybody's like, oh, geez, are we crashing? Well, as soon as we land the plane, the, uh, the, the, the flight attendant gets on the speaker and says, welcome back, uh, welcome to Austin, our home base for this, uh, for this, uh, for this airplane. Hey, y'all, just to let you know that the landing, that's not my fault. And everybody starts laughing. And the flight attendant oh, says, cool. and just so y'all are aware, the, 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 that hard landing, that was not even the pilot's fault. That hard landing was the asphalt. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. And as we uh, wrap up episode four, the uh, Pick 5 uh, Challenge Edition, I uh, just want to thank everybody that's uh, joined us to uh, play this year. Uh, certainly want to wish everybody good luck uh, in week two. I know we all need it. Um, everybody have a uh, great weekend, and uh, we'll post the week two results on Saturday night. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Wreck them. Thank you for listening to the Fearless Fans Podcast, a podcast about everything Texas Tech related and then some. All of our episodes are written and produced by Steve McKelkey, Keith Abbott, Ryan Butler, Steve Garcia, and John Thomas, unless otherwise noted. Don't forget also to follow us on our social media pages on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. The opinions expressed on this podcast are solely the opinions of the show host and intended for only for the purposes of this podcast. Yeah.